It almost couldn't be a worse time to launch a budget-conscious smartphone. Yes, people are being more frugal, but there are already amazing options out there. If Apple's new iPhone SE lives up to its predecessor, it'll easily earn its $400 price tag. And rumors have Google's Pixel 4a launching soon around the same price. If that weren't enough, last year's excellent Pixel 3a just dropped to $299, which I think is the deal of the year so far. With competition like that, you gotta ask why anyone would want to buy a Moto G for $299. And my answer would ordinarily be no one, not even for the stylus in the silo, were it not for a reduction at the retailers. Yeah, the Moto G stylus is so named because it comes with a pen in the pocket. There is a Moto G power out there as well, but I love the pen as a concept, and I told Motorola, please, just send me the Moto G stylus. Why do I love the pen so much? Well, most importantly, it's like a mouse for your mobile. Look, we've known for years how disgustingly germ-ridden our phones are, so it's nice to be able to tap and scroll your way through the interface with a pen instead of, you know, smearing your finger all over the gross glass. You've got to remember to disinfect the pen, of course, but anything that keeps your fingers a little cleaner, especially right now, is a win. There's a little smartness here, too. You can set the Moto Notes app to automatically launch when you take the stylus out, and if you put the pen down and forget to replace it, the phone will remind you the next time you wake it up. It can even tell you the last time you took the pen out and where you were when you did so, so you can go back and try to find it. Now keep in mind, this is a budget phone, so this isn't an S Pen with a bajillion levels of pressure sensitivity. It's not a remote control for the camera. It's a metal stick with a nub on the end. This is for signing documents, or doing some light edits in Snapseed, or blotting out my personal details on a bill so I can show you what four nights in a hospital would have cost me if I didn't have health insurance. Yeah, pneumonia sucks. Don't risk getting sick, folks. If you have to go out, like I did when I took these pictures on my way to the store, wear a mask and gloves. While we're talking photos, Motorola has never been great at them. The colors tend to be off, the dynamic range tends to be lacking, the night mode tends to be… bad. I think the company knows this, and so it tends to try to make up for that with toys like Spot Color and Cinemagraph and a bunch of portrait modes. You know, I don't know, maybe it's because this camera's hiding the five extra quarantine pounds I've put on so far, but I like these selfies a lot more than I expected to. No, actually, the real reason is the better edge detection and depth effect than I expect from a budget phone, particularly on the front-facing camera. Also more than I expected, the number of cameras. Three of them on the back, topped off by a dedicated video camera Motorola has physically installed sideways, so you can shoot video in landscape while holding the phone vertically. The idea is that's more comfortable, and this is a so-called action camera for skateboarding or bumpy adventures. Put those features together with that twist wrist camera launch shortcut, and it's almost enough to make me forget the inherent inferiority of the low light performance, the hamstrung image processing as a result of that cheaper processor. But not quite. Same with those other Motorola hallmarks I love so much. Moto Display is still the best always on display on the market, fight me. And paired with Android 10, all the special Motorola gestures and shortcuts should make the phone a pleasure to use. But in a word, it's slow. In another word, it's laggy. In another word, it's inconsistent. You get the picture. And the screen you use all this on is just plain ugly. Tilt it just a little and all the brightness drains away. There's unsightly modeling too, all around the perimeter and the selfie camera. It's not a defect, it's just a cheap LCD. You've got to cut some corners to kick out an affordable smartphone, and you can also see that on the backplate, which smudges up the second you take it out of the box, and the whole thing feels plasticky despite the heft. Now, to its credit, Motorola made the most of the thickness, found room for a headphone jack and big speakers, and that means the G Stylus is a good companion for speakerphone calls and video conferences. I had like an hour-long Zoom call that was really cool. And the aforementioned heft is partly due to a big battery, like the OnePluses, I got two days out of this thing with light to moderate use. Does any of that make this thing worth buying at $299? I gotta say no. Not in a world where the Pixel 3a exists. In fact, I was gonna bag this video entirely, until I saw this story from Phone Arena. If you get the Moto G stylus through some retailers in the States with a new line of service, the price comes down to $199 on Sprint or $149 on Verizon. 
When you consider all you're getting for that price, this bizarre amalgamation of action camera and poor man's Galaxy Note, well, then, and only then, it's a good deal. This video was produced after two weeks with the Moto G Stylus review sample provided by Motorola, but I don't take money from manufacturers or retailers for reviews, nor do I offer copy approval or early preview rights to same. That means Motorola is seeing this for the first time right alongside you. If you really want to support the channel, please go watch a video I cared deeply about, but which very few people watched, my Moto Razor review. I miss that thing. Until next time, thanks for watching, and even if you can't leave the house, the spirit of the sign-off is the same. Stay mobile, my friends.